Come on, come on, come on. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, if you don't mind, stand to your feet. Hallelujah. We just want to welcome you here today. Bless the name of the Lord. God is good. God is good. Hey. Come on to clap your hands. Hey. Here we go. Say, welcome to Key Church. So glad. First time visitors. Pleasure to meet you. Say, we believe that brought you here. So you like. Church, so glad. Come on, first time visitors. Pleasure to meet you. Say we believe, we believe, we believe God brought you here. Hey, we're building champions. That's the reason why. So if you wanna be a champion, yeah. you got the key. You got the key. Say there's a champion, you and me. Hallelujah! Come on, give a prayer. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! There's a champion inside of me. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! God is good. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! going to ask you, wherever you are today, at home, here on campus, to just bow your head before the Lord. Let us reverence our God. Right now, cast your mind away from every distraction, everything that has gone through on, gone on this week. Focus on our King. Focus on the Mighty One. Focus on your Redeemer. This morning, ask Him to forgive you for every sin that you have committed. Ask Him that any hindrance into entering into His presence, that He will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And Father, we come before you all the honor. We give you all the praise. We give you all the adoration because there is none like unto you, O oh God. You are the same God, O oh Lord, of yesterday, today, and forever. We remember the Israelites at the Red Sea, how they walked through the Red Sea on dry land. We remember you are the God of Elijah that turned the dry bones to life. We remember you are the great provider when Jesus turned water into wine. We remember you are the same God that rose Lazarus from the dead. After three days long, you yourself rose from the dead. So this morning we acknowledge your greatness. Lord, and we reverence you, O oh God. And we speak life for everyone that is experiencing death. God, we speak laughter to everyone that is going through depression. We ask, O oh God, for deliverance for anyone that is bound in sin. We ask for healing for anyone that is sick. 
We ask for reconciliation from broken relationships. We ask for salvation this morning. Lord, and we give you all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. How many people said amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Come on, put those hands together. We're going to watch God work it out. Hey! Do you believe that he's able today? Come on. Yeah. God can do it. Come on, say 
Anybody know him to be a way maker? Yeah. Hallelujah. All right, that didn't hit you. Anybody know him to be a miracle worker? Yeah, that, that's your testimony. Has he worked miracles for you? Has he changed lives around you? Has he changed your life? Has he opened up doors you didn't even know existed? And has he given you peace that passes all understanding, even in this? season of darkness and turmoil and challenge. God has been good to you, y'all. Let's give him praise one more time for the awesome, awesome, awesome God that we serve. 
I was looking out in the audience on this morning and I saw some people wiping their eyes and I feel the same way. Uh, anybody blessed and you know it? Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm blessed and I know I'm blessed. God has been good to me. He has kept me. Uh, he has kept you. What an awesome, awesome God that we serve. Well, welcome uh, to the Key Church and uh, we want to welcome uh, those that are on campus and we want to welcome those that are worshiping with us online. Uh, we love all, you, all of you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall, come on, this is the day that the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us come into the house of the Lord and worship his name forever. He is an awesome, awesome, awesome God. And we love him. We have so much going on in our world. But with all the changes that we have going on in our world, uh, it is good to remember that God is in control. Everybody know he's fully in control? He doesn't do everything, but he has to allow it. Nothing can be done without him allowing it. And I'm so glad that the God that I serve, the God that loves me, the God that looks out for me, is in control of everything. All right. Uh, well, I want to lift up a couple prayers. Um, we have a few members who have lost loved ones. And so one of our favorite people, Sister Destiny, Montemayor, we know that she lost a parent, she lost a mom, and then one of our members, Sister Felicia, lost a parent, and so we want to pray for them. Let's, let's, let's take out some time, amen. Our merciful Father, Lord, we love you and we praise you, and we want to lift up our members who lost loved ones or anybody else around the country that may have lost somebody that they love. Lord, give them peace that passes all understanding. Comfort these families even right now. We know how difficult it is to lose a parent. And Lord, only you can heal, amen. So help them to continue to look to the hills from which come up their strength, because their strength will come from the Lord. And we ask you to do it all in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. All right, all right. Now come on, uh, sister, we uh, have a, a presentation from our veterans ministry, we appreciate them. And with us getting ready to talk about our veterans, uh, we want to, Recognize one of my favorite young men, Brother Caleb. Brother Caleb in the house, wave your hand. What's up, Caleb? Hallelujah. 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 Brother Caleb came to our church a short while ago, and in that short period of time, he has touched so many hearts, and so many people love you, man. I love you. I'm so proud of you. He's getting ready to go to the armed service, and so uh, we just want to, come on, first of all, say congratulations. Say thank you. Thank you in advance for your service to us to keep us safe. And let's say a little prayer for Caleb. Amen. Let's say a prayer for Caleb and all our young people going off to college, some of them freshmen in college, doing a new thing. Amen. My daughter Destiny has grown now and it's different when you have your, your children grow up and they make changes and they have to make adult decisions and all of that. Let's pray. Merciful Father, Lord, we love you and we thank you for Brother Caleb. We thank you for his life and we thank you for how you have changed his life in such a short period of time, we've seen such a dramatic and amazing change. And though we're just so proud of him, we're so grateful that he has the opportunity to serve our country, Lord. We ask that you'll keep him safe, uh, Lord, that you'll just bless him and be with him. Use him to be a light in that situation, that he will demonstrate his faith before all that watch and show how powerful and loving you are. And so we ask that you do that. Return him back to us even better than when he left. That's our desire for all of our young people uh, that are advancing in their, their years and doing new things. And we just ask that you just protect all of them, keep all of them, keep their minds, keep their hearts. And we ask you to do all of that in Christ Jesus. Come on, y'all, let's give God a hand clap of praise. All right. And then, Lord, we have had a major change in our country. Come on, somebody. Uh, congratulations, congratulations to President-elect Joe Biden and President, Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. And uh, we are just, um, this life is all about change and, and things happen. So we, and we want to just pray and y'all continue to pray during this week that we'll just have peace uh, as we transition. Amen. We want to we bring some peace and unity uh, into our country. It just seemed like we have kind of gotten away from that. And so we want God to just bless our country, bring all of that back. And God is good. And with all that being said, we appreciate our veterans. We appreciate all of those who serve our country. Come on, y'all. We can give God praise for them. Hallelujah. 
here at the Key, you know, we have an amazing veterans ministry. And right about now, around this season, we're usually getting ready for our veterans ball. And so because of COVID, we weren't able to have that on this year. Uh, but we want to our veterans ministry to come and give a presentation to all the veterans. Come on. <clears throat> would forget them and their sacrifices that they have made. I want to share some fun facts about Veterans Day. Did you know during World War I, when it was Armistice Day, it was signed on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. We also know that there are now, since 2010, 21.8 million veterans in the United States. We know that the VA is now doing a 2020 count, so we don't have those numbers yet. There are around 9 million veterans over the age of 65, and around 1.6 million veterans are women. God is good, isn't he? Hallelujah. He deserves our praise. He deserves our worship. I don't know about you, but there's nothing better than being in the presence of the Lord. In his presence is fullness of joy. Everything that you need is in the presence of the Lord. Before we receive the word on this morning, we want to just welcome him in the presence. We know he's already here, but we just want him to manifest in a fresh way, in a new way. We just want him to have his way in this place. So if you don't mind worshiping with us as we welcome in the Holy Spirit, welcome in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Anybody want his presence today? Anybody want what God has for you today? Hallelujah. Nothing can compare. 
that we serve. Hallelujah. Oh, it is so awesome when you know that God is in the house. Anybody feel the spirit of the Lord in the house on today? Hallelujah. I'm so glad to be here with him. And when he shows up, that's what makes a difference. And we are excited about it. Amen. God has a, a word for us, a relevant word for this season. Hallelujah. And so this morning, uh, we're going to look at the book of James. We're going to look at chapter 1, verses 12 through 18. Here at the key, we stand for the reading of God's holy word. So when you find it, can you please stand for the reading of God's holy word? James chapter 1, verses 12 through 18. Hallelujah. Even from the comfort and the safety of your own home. Please stand for the reading of God's holy word. James chapter 1, verses 12 through 18. If you found it, say amen. amen. If you're still looking, say wait one minute. All right. Y'all getting good. Amen. Yeah, it's good all of the time. You're getting there quick. All right. James chapter 1, starting at, starting at verse 12. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial. Having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life 
that the Lord has promised to those who love him. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, gives birth to death. So don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights who does not change like the shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And for a little while, I'd like to share with you from this idea blessed for a change blessed for a change is there uh, anybody in the house that's blessed uh, all right i saw a couple a couple hands didn't go up you probably just wasn't ready for the question let's try it again anybody in here in the house that's blessed anybody online that's blessed hallelujah you're blessed even if you don't know it you're blessed when you woke up this morning you, you took a breath and it worked. Come on, somebody. You blessed when you woke up this morning and you saw the ceiling. And I get amen. It, it could have been a different way. God blessed us just to allow us to see another day. This is the day that the Lord has made. And in response to that, that blessing, you know, we're going to choose to rejoice. Come on, somebody give them some praise. Give them somebody they you know you're blessed. Hallelujah. You know, somebody, you blessed, but you just got saved and uh, you just experienced the goodness of the Lord. And so you're blessed for a change. <laughs> the blessing that God is bringing on your life is something new. You're blessed for a change. Uh, there's also some of you, watch this. Um, you have been blessed by a change. Amen. So you've been going through some tough times, but you're blessed because God has made some changes in your life. And some of you, you're so blessed, God wants to use you to make a change. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. But what we need to understand is that change is, change is just a part of life. Anybody know I'm right about it? Uh, we have had major change in our government's leadership. And uh, come on, y'all, let's give God a hand clap of praise. We just pray. We just pray whatever your will. I told you, it's challenges with both parties. It's challenges with, with, with all of the leaders. No such thing as a perfect leader. I shared that with you uh, a few weeks ago. We talked about the right selection in this election and that, um, you know, you have one party, they, they push for justice, but then what comes along with it is unrighteousness. Another party, they push for righteousness, but they, they allow injustice. And so it's, it's not a perfect scenario. Amen. But we pray that God's will will be done. And so we're going to accept uh, what has, has happened. Amen. Hallelujah. And so with that, though, we do want to congratulate um, President-elect Joe Biden. And come on. And Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. Amen. And for sure, it's a change. What a historical change that we have experienced. Uh, last election, uh, we had the first African-American president, and that was a change. Now we have the first woman of color as a vice president, and surely that is a change. Come on, somebody. Sure, so it is a change. Sure it is a change. Hallelujah. You may not like change, but you need to get used to it because it is the one thing that is inevitable and it is the one thing that is necessary. Change is never easy, but it's inevitable. It's going to happen. And come on, so anybody know I'm right about it? And change is always necessary. It is just necessary for things to change. And uh, what a change, what a change. Um, 
you have a vice president that is half Jamaican and half Indian. Amen. That's a change. Can I get amen? That's, I think that's some change for you. Might as well get used to it. And those that are racist and holding on to racist, you, you might as well go and get your mind right because things are changing. Yeah. Oh, come on. Things are changing whether you like it or not. You need to get saved, get your mind and your heart right. Hallelujah. Now, everything you know right now will eventually change. Your looks will change. Your job will change. Matter of fact, sometimes it'll change so much you won't have it anymore, you'll be retired. Can I get an amen? Good job. Come on, somebody. Your location will change. Now, since we honor the veterans, anybody been in the military, your location changes quite a bit in the military. Matter of fact, most of you, a lot of you here and in house on campus, you're living in Texas, but you're not from Texas. And some of you had no idea you would ever be in Texas. Can I get an amen? But locations change. And that's the one thing that happens when you get saved. Don't ever say what you won't do or where you won't go because God will have you in some places you never thought you would be. Can I get amen? The greatest change is surrender your life to the Lord. Uh, you have to get to the place where you just say, Lord, send me, wherever it is. I, I, a matter of fact, I just got to the point. I don't even try to make decisions no more, Lord. Whatever you want me to do, just let me know, and I'm all the way in. Not only will your looks change, and not only will your location change, your money will change. Anybody know that money has changed? Your change, your, your change will get strange. You'll have a lot of money in the bank in one season. <laughs> And a little bit of money in the bank in another season. And sometimes it had nothing to do with you. Just things change. Your relationships will change. Anybody had any change in relationships? Relationships will change. Relationships will change. Uh, it's interesting that I've had some relationships will change. People that I used to talk to every week don't, won't call me back now. Go figure. But relationships change. They just change. Your children will change. They was your baby. Then they, they still your baby in your mind, but they hadn't been a baby in a long time. Come on, somebody. They've grown up and going on about their business. Can I get an amen? You used to see them every day. Now you hope they will call you every now and then because they've grown and got their own lives. Can I get an amen? They think children change. Oh, anybody know I'm right about it? Hallelujah. And finally, your president will change. Your president will change. It's a guarantee. No matter, no matter what you went through in the last term, just give it about four years, eight years best, but it will change. Can I get an amen? Everything changes in our life. And James, in this passage, helps us to deal with change by letting us know that no matter what changes in your life, and, and it's going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot of changes that's going to come along with life. But no matter what changes in your life, don't let whatever changes in your life change the faith that you have in the Lord. That's the whole key to it. Life is inconsistent, but make sure that your faith in God is consistent and you'll be all right. Come on, somebody. Your looks will change, but don't let your faith change. Your children will change. Don't let your faith change. Your friends will change. Don't let your faith change. Your location changed, but you, trust, you trusted them. Come on, somebody. In Jamaica, now trust them in Texas. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. You trusted him on the East Coast. Now trust him on the West Coast. Anybody know him right about it? Where, wherever you go, whatever happens, James said the key to life is already prepare for the fact that things are going to change. Things that you got used to now. And we don't like things to change. We want them just stay the same. You know, and they might not even be that good, but you done got comfortable with them. And he says, but things are going to change. Change, just already get that in your mind, but when they change, listen, don't let the change going on around you affect the faith you have in the Lord. Make sure that your faith in God stays firm. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's look at verse 13. Let's look at verse 13. Uh, matter of fact, let's look at uh, 12 and 13. Blessed is the one who uh, perseveres under trial. Because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life, 
that the Lord, that the Lord has promised to those who love him. I'm sorry, just verse 12. Verse 12, y'all ready? And the first thing that we learn in verse 12 First thing we want to talk about this morning is negative changes, negative changes. One thing that you can be sure about is not only will things continually change, but some negative challenges and changes will come along in your life. No matter how holy you are, no matter how spiritual you are, we know you love the Lord, we know you try to do everything right, all you have to do is to keep on living and some negative challenges are going to come your way. Is there anybody here to testify? Can I get an amen? No matter what you do, I don't care how far you run, you can't get away from it. You're going to have to experience some negative changes and challenges in your life. Now, many of the negative changes and challenges that come our way come as a result of us making bad choices and decisions. So sometimes you're going through a whole lot because you've already done a whole lot. Can I get an amen? amen. You, didn't, you didn't act it up, and so now you got some challenges in your life. It's nobody else's fault. You can blame everybody else, but it's, it's the choices that you made that got you to where you are. That's why here at The Key, we love everybody, we support everybody, but our main focus, our main initial focus is on children and young adults because, uh, youth and young adults, because we want to get them like, we can help you to repair your life after you messed it up. And we, we're here to do that. We're here to help you if you got some challenges and you've made some bad decisions. But our main goal is to try to help those that haven't really messed their lives up. They can make good decisions early. Come on, somebody, so they don't have to go through all of the challenges that we went through as their parents and they passed them. Anybody know I'm right about it? We're trying to help them to know. You can get it right with the Lord early. Start figuring this thing out early. Start trusting the Lord. Get saved early uh, so he can change your life and give you a relationship with him, help you to understand that the word is right. You can start studying the truth early. You don't have to live on lies. You can find out what the truth is about life early. You can choose to start obeying that truth early and then it'll practically come out in good decision making early so you can avoid a lot of the mistakes that we made. Come on somebody, you don't have to struggle, you don't have to suffer, you don't have to go through as much as we had to go through because you can get it right early. Somebody say praise the Lord. Come on, somebody. Now, if, if you're a little older like me and we made some mistakes, God can help you work through all those mistakes that we've made as well. But we love to help young people to know, get focused now, get it right early because you can avoid a lot of the mistakes. Now, some of the challenges and the changes, negative ones that come along in life, don't always come in response to your bad decision making. Some of it just come along with living. You didn't do anything wrong, but it's just some challenges that just came your way, and you're going to have to learn how to deal with the challenges. Uh, a good example is one that's really relevant to us right now, COVID-19. It didn't come because you did something wrong. You were just minding your own business, and all of a sudden, COVID-19 came, and you got some negative challenges in your life that has impacted every aspect of your life. It's not in response to what you did. It's just in response to the fact that you live in a fallen world, and we got some problems. Can I get an amen? And, 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 and challenges have come your way. Anybody know I'm right about it? Somebody say hallelujah. Now, God wants you to know that you are not responsible for the negativity that comes to you. He's just holding you accountable for how you respond to the situation. Like you couldn't control COVID-19, it just came. And it put some pressure on you you never had before. And you couldn't control whether you was going to deal with it because you had to deal with it whether you liked it or not. It, it just was here. Can I get an amen? Like, we did, pastors, we didn't have a choice. Church members, we didn't have a choice. We just had to change. Couldn't have church anymore. We had, look, what we've been doing since the beginning of the church, we couldn't do no more. Since, since 
the church was created. Come on, Acts chapter 2. Uh, we couldn't do that anymore. Wasn't no more fellowship, wasn't more talking, wasn't more hugging. You couldn't come to church and hear at the key. You know, we love to hug people. We love the fellowship. All the fellowship was shut down and it changed for everybody. And we had to adopt and we had to get some technology. And we had to get online. We had to change everything that we did. We couldn't control what happened to us. We were just responsible to God how we respond. And you got to be careful that even when negativity comes your way, you don't allow the negative things that happen in your life, well, come on somebody, to change how you deal with God. So now, anybody know I'm right about it? Come on somebody, and then look, look, look. You're gonna go through some trials and tribulations. That's just a part of life. Anybody testify? We're gonna go through some trials and tribulations. Now, the text helps us to understand that the trials and the tribulations that you will go through are just a test of your faith. They have come to help you to discover how much you really love and trust God. Because, like we say all the time, it's easy to trust God in fair weather. Or, watch this, it's easy to fake faith in God in fair weather. But when trials and tribulations come, when changes come, when negativity come, when, whether in response to your actions or just because you were living, when they come, it will help you to find out how you really feel about him. And sometimes it'll help other folk to know how you really feel about him. Because you've been running around here shouting and falling out and hallelujah and all that praising the Lord. And soon as COVID hit, come on somebody, your faith just went out the window. Can I, can I get an amen? amen? We have COVID, but where's your faith? That's, that's what we want to know. Anybody know I'm, I'm right about it? Can I get an amen? And what God wants you to know is that if you will persevere through the negative changes and challenges, through the trials and the tribulations, God can bless you even in a negative situation. But he wants to know, can you persevere? Can you not give up? Can you hang in there? Can you keep on praying? Can you keep on uh, proclaiming the gospel? Can you keep on praising the Lord? Can you even praise him in dark days? Even though it's been difficult, has your faith stayed intact? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And it says, watch this, watch this, watch this. The challenges is just to help you to find out if you really, really love him. Negative challenges come to give you an opportunity. So basically what it's saying is that when the test comes, see, a test does a few things. Like, we don't like tests, we don't like tests, but tests are always inevitable and they're necessary. We don't like them. We don't like to be tested. When we was in school, we don't like tests, but the test's coming. You go to school, the test's coming. It's inevitable and it's necessary. So why is the test necessary? It's necessary to find out if you really know what you say you know. Like the teacher, I've been teaching it to you the whole semester. Now we're going to find out what you really know. And what God is saying, you've been telling everybody that you love him, and here comes the situation that's going to let you know and everybody else know if you really love him. The test is coming. It's, come on, somebody. It's, it's inevitable and it's necessary. And God wants you to know, wants to know, uh, ha how have you done with the test that he's allowed to come? Uh, what kind of test have we had? We had the test of injustice. We had the test of COVID-19. We had the, the, the test of racism. We had, we've been in a whole lot of tests. How has your faith done during these negative tests, during these trials and tribulations? Have you persevered? Now, tests always come as an opportunity for you to be promoted and go to a next level uh, to be blessed in a greater way by God. And once you understand that, you'll start looking forward to the test. See, like, when the test come, every student is not scared of the test. Some of the students are looking forward to the test, but those are the ones that study. Those are the ones that prepare. Can I get an amen? Uh, the question was, was you preparing when the season was fair weather and getting ready so that you'd be ready and geared up when the weather turned bad? 
So was, you, was your faith, was you strengthening your faith before COVID so when COVID hit, you was ready to handle COVID because your faith was already strong. You've been, you've been working out in your faith. Can I get an amen? You've been practicing praise so much that even when negativity happened, it didn't stop you from praising. You just turned up your praise even more. Come on, somebody. God wants to know, can you persevere? And if you persevere, God will bless you now for your faith, and then he'll bless you in the future eternally for your faith. Anybody know I'm right about it? Somebody say hallelujah. We serve a God that is in the blessing business. Oh, come on, somebody. That was verse 12. That was verse 12, negative changes. Come on, somebody. Uh, let's look at verse 13 through 15. And it says in verse 13, when tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does God tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desires. Then after the desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, gives birth to death. First thing we talked about was negative changes, and now second thing we want to talk about is negative character. Negative character. God says, watch this, watch this. When, when negativity and when temptation and when challenges, evil challenges, bad challenges come your way, and you respond to the negative challenge with a negative attitude or a negative action, and then you get negative results, James is making sure that you know, don't blame God. Oh, I'm just mad at God. Uh, I can't believe that, you know, I'm, I'm going through this. Can I get an amen? Uh, James said, don't ever blame God when you've been tempted. Because he helps us in these three verses to understand that at the root of temptation, watch this, at the root of temptation, you need to understand this, at the root of temptation is evil. So when he's describing temptation, he said, when you've been tempted, never blame God because, watch this, God can't be tempted by evil. Because, see, 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 temptation is when somebody does something or something happens that tries to motivate you to do evil. That's what a temptation is. Like a temptation and a test are different. Both of them will check your faith, but they have different intentions. Like the temptation is designed to get you to lose your faith, and the test is designed to get you to be promoted in your faith. They're both different. They both test your faith, but they have, they're, they're different in what they're trying to accomplish. And he says, don't blame God for trying to tempt you because God can't be tempted or neither has he ever tempted anyone because God will never try to get you to do something evil. He, come on, can I get an amen? But what God will do is test you. The devil will tempt you, but God will test you. And the temptation and the test are different. They both test your faith, but they're different. Now, what you need to understand is that when the devil tempts you, he's trying to get you to disobey God. He'll bring some negativity, and I told you, that's why you gotta be careful. Always prepare for the negativity, because it's gonna come. The change is gonna come, challenges are gonna come, trials and tribulations are gonna come. Already prepare for it. Don't ever be foolish enough to think you're gonna go through this life and you're not gonna have any challenges. And you're not gonna have any changes. Already prepare for it, already be prayed up, already be studied up, get ready for it, so when it comes, you're not caught off guard, you're ready to maintain your faith going forward. But the devil will bring these situations in your life and he'll bring them up and, and his whole goal is to get you to respond in disobedience to God. In response to the temptation, he wants you to respond in disobedience. Now, remember, remember, that God will not hold you accountable for what happens because we all gonna have negative stuff happen to us, but he is holding you accountable for how you respond. So even when negativity comes to you, can you respond to temptation and negativity with righteousness? That's what God wants to know. So in other words, watch this. The devil tempted you, but God can use the temptation. God didn't bring the temptation because he can't do that. He's a good guy. God didn't bring the temptation, but God can use the temptation as a test. The devil meant it for evil, but God can use it for good. 
The devil brought that mess to you, but God can still use it to improve you. The devil meant it for evil, but God can use it for good. The whole choice is up to you how you're going to respond. But if you respond in faith, then God can elevate you to the next level of faith. Are, are y'all getting this? Come on, somebody. You need to get this because this is your life. It's, things are going to change. And, and all the changes are not going to be good. And some of it's going to be negative. And, and, and God can. Uh, so whenever you're tempted, it has to be by the devil who is the evil one or somebody full, full of the devil. <laughs> Come on, somebody. He got some players. <laughs> he got some folk full of the devil. And all they bring you. Like, uh, so if you got somebody, you call them a friend. And all they bring to you is some foolishness and some evil and some temptation. And they're always trying to get you to go do something that you know is in opposition to God's will for your life. They are not your friend. Can I get an amen? They are sent by the devil. Their whole goal is to get you to disobey God. They have no good intention for you. Uh, you need to run. Anybody know I'm right about it? All right, all right. Uh, y'all seem like y'all not getting it. All right, y'all, y'all know the Bible. Let me just give y'all this real quick. Um, let me give you the Bible real quick in a nutshell, the whole Bible in a nutshell. Um, in the Old Testament, we had God the Father, and he dwelt on earth personally, and he spoke to people audibly in person. Anybody know I'm right about it? Uh, he talked to Joshua, told Joshua personally, be strong and courageous. I had to freak Joshua out. Can, I, can, you, can you imagine the Lord just talking to you? Joshua, you're like, whoa, be, be strong and courageous, right? And so from, in the Old Testament, we had God the Father was on earth. He dwelt on earth. He spoke to people. He had a personal relationship with people, God the Father. And then God the Father said, okay, enough of that. I'm going back to heaven. And when God the Father went back to heaven, he sent his son, Jesus. And for a period of time, Jesus dwelt on earth. Anybody know I'm right about it? And then Jesus did what he came here to do. He died to pay the price for our sins. And then he was resurrected to defeat our sin and give us a relationship with God. And after he finished his assignment, he said, I'm going back to my father's house. And in my father's house, there are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. And I'm going there to prepare a place for you that where I am, you will be also. So he left. But when he left, he sent the Holy Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit came after we became believers and the Holy Spirit came to live in us. And so now the Holy Spirit is dwelling on earth, but he's dwelling inside of believers. Amen. Can I get amen? Because, and uh, just, just uh, answer to my dad, he keep texting me and saying there's only one God. It is only one God, but he got three personalities. Don't just read the Old Testament, read the New Testament. Can I get amen? And watch this. And when Jesus was baptized by his cousin, John the Baptist, we saw all three on earth at the same time. And the Bible says that when he was baptized, the Holy Spirit transcended on the son like a dove. And then it said the father spoke and said, this is my son and who I am well pleased. So you had the father, you had the son and the Holy Spirit all present at the baptism at the same time. Now, after Jesus was baptized, he was led to the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit didn't tempt him. He just allowed him to be tempted. But when he got to the wilderness, the devil did all the tempting. Can I get an amen? And the devil tempted Jesus, and he tempted him in three ways, but in response to the temptation, watch this, God didn't bring the temptation, but God still used the temptation as a test to see where his son's faith really was. Come on, anybody know I'm right about it? And in response to the devil's temptation, Jesus always used the word, and Jesus always chose to side with the side of the Father. He never sold out to the devil. See, we gotta be careful because we see now in a season, no matter how big a church is, and no matter how big a pastor is, when temptations come your way, when challenges come your way, do you sell out your faith for popularity? You got to be careful. Look, it's really, you've been preaching on it for years, but we got to be careful when, when negatives come our way, can we respond to unrighteousness with righteousness? Can we combat the devil with the word? Can we? God is not holding you responsible to the negativity that comes your way. He's holding you responsible to the righteousness you need to give in return. Somebody give God a hand clap of prayer. Hallelujah. Changes are going to come. Some of them are going to be negative. Some come with just living life. But when the negative things come, don't be caught off guard. Be prepared and return back wretchedness for righteousness. Somebody may come at you with a bad attitude. Somebody may be tripping on you. Can you return back righteousness in response to their wrongdoing? That's when God knows that you got strong faith. And that test will allow you to be elevated to the next level in your faith. Anybody trying to go to the next level? Anybody? Come on, somebody. Somebody say hallelujah. 
Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. All right. And then he says, now, when you responded negatively in response to the temptation, don't blame God for none of this because God can't tempt. He says, what you got to understand is this will happen. You still had some evil desires in your heart. You perpetrated like you was a good Christian. You come every Sunday, you run around the church, you shout. But the reality is you hadn't trust God to start working that evilness out of your heart. It's some evil desires in your heart. So because you already had some evil desires, when the devil came and promoted some temptation, that temptation kicked in your evil desire. Like your evil desire just responded to the temptation because that's how, that's what evil desire does. When the temptation come, your evil desire jump out and take it. Are y'all playing with me? The devil has seen all your tapes. Come on, somebody. He know what you like. He's not going to tempt you with what you don't like. He's going to tempt you with what you like. And when he come, and it's not the devil, it's not the Lord, because the Lord not trying to get you to mess up your marriage, but you making choices to mess it up. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. But, but the only reason you mess it up, because it was already in you to mess it up, and the devil just brought the temptation. And when he brought the temptation, he brought what you like. And you responded to what you like that the devil brought because it was already a desire in your heart for it. And when it provided opportunity, you jumped on it. And when you jumped on it, it's called a sin. It said, and now that you've been sinning so long, come on somebody, when sin is fully developed, it results in death. And, and so when you continue to operate in that sin, something's going to die. You're going to kill something. Can I get an amen? amen? But James wants us to know, don't, and all that, don't blame the devil. I mean, excuse me, don't blame the Lord. You can't blame the devil and blame yourself. Can I get an amen? Because he's the one that tempted you and you're the one that took temptation. Somebody say hallelujah. Woo. All right, let's go over to verse 16 and 17. Y'all ready? Hallelujah. We're ready to get out of here. Y'all ready? Verse 16 and 17. James says, don't be deceived, dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows. So we talked about negative changes. We talked about negative character. Like if you have something negative coming your way, negative temptation, is, it only can come from a person with negative character. Because God can't, God has holy character. He won't bring you temptation. And then the third point we want to talk about is no change, no change, no change. And what God is saying, the best news that you can ever get is with all the multiplicity of changes that are continuing to happen in your life, there's one thing you can be sure about is that God will never change. Oh, Y'all don't know when to get excited. For all the instability that's in life, there's one thing that is stable, and that's the Lord. For all the inconsistency in life, the one thing that, you, that can be consistent in your life is the Lord. Come on, somebody. With all the insecurity in life, the one thing that is secure is the Lord. The Lord is firm. The Lord is, is stable. The Lord, he doesn't change. Uh, things will change. People will change. Jobs will change. Looks will change. Money will change. Presidents will change, stuff is gonna change, but God will never change. God is Alpha and Omega. He, 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 was, he, he was God, he is God, he will be God. He, watch this, let's go back. He, he was good, he is good, and he will be good. Come on, somebody. And, and look, watch this, and he won't change, and circumstances can't make him change. No matter how much bad goes on, it can't get him to do bad. He can only respond with good, because he is a good guy. He only wants good out of you. He won't try to get you to do evil. He only tried to get you to be good. He wants you to be good like him. He only motivates you to be good. Somebody say hallelujah. Anybody glad that with all the inconsistency on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. He never changes. He's consistent. He's the foundation of my life and because I stand on him, he keeps me consistent. Watch this. When things are going good, I don't get above myself. I don't get arrogant. I don't get, I don't start thinking more highly of myself than I ought to because he keeps me consistent when things fall and crash and start going bad. I don't pass out. I don't give up hope. I don't throw in the towel because he keeps me consistent. And I'm so glad that I serve a God. Come on, somebody. 
I don't, I don't have to go through the roller coaster experiences of life, up and down and up and down, but I can stay firm, I can stay consistent. I can't, I don't start to trip when he's blessing me and I don't start to trip on other folk. Come on, somebody. And watch this, watch this. Ain't anybody glad about it that you serve a God that never changes? He was, he was good, he, he is good, and he will be good. God can bring about good in your life. Even with all the negative going on around, God can be good to you and get good out of you. Anybody know I'm right about it? Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Somebody willing to testify that it's been a mess. 2020 has been a mess. It's been a roller coaster ride. It's been racism going on. It's been social injustice. It's been all kind of stuff. It's been COVID-19, but I still been blessed all the way through. God kept me through it. I didn't pass out. I didn't give up. I kept on trusting him. See, what God wants to know, watch this. How can you respond to negative things? Will you maintain your faith? 2020 has been challenging. But have you stayed faithful to God? Watch this, in your church attendance? Oh, it's been so hard on you, I don't have time for church. It's too hard out here. What? I'm so sick, I don't have time to go to the hospital. That's backwards. The sicker you get, <laughs> <laughs> the quicker you need to go to the hospital. This, this is God's spiritual hospital. This, this is where you run to. This, this is the refuge. Anybody know I'm right about it? Watch this. Whether on campus or online, during COVID-19, has your church attendance stayed faithful? During COVID-19, has your service to the Lord stayed faithful? Have you kept serving him? Like you may not have come on campus, but if you found some kind of way, you can keep on serving the Lord. It's COVID-19, but don't let COVID-19, don't let something negative, the devil meant it for evil, but God can use it for good. Don't let something negative happen around you that caused you to fail in your faith. Matter of fact, as the devil is turning up, we need to turn up, go to another level in your faith. Watch this, watch this, watch this. I know COVID-19 has been hard, but have you been faithful in your giving to the Lord's church. Lord, bless my finances. You're not faithful in your finances. How can he bless with? He can't bless what you're not faithful with. And then you get mad with folk that he blessing, but it's some folk, they still bless even during COVID-19. Some folk bless, God been blessing their socks off even during COVID-19. But it's not, watch this, not because they're special, it's because they chose to be faithful. And when you are faithful, God can bless you for your faithfulness. Anybody know I'm right about it? It said, the text said, all good and perfect gifts come from the Lord. He's the only one that can give them. And the Lord that gives good gifts, watch this, he gives them consistently because he's been good, he is good and he will be good and he treats his children good when they act good. Somebody say hallelujah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He treats his children good when you act good. Well, I says you can't control what happens to you, but you can't control when you respond. And when you respond good in response to evil, God will bless you with some good things because God is in the blessing business. Anybody know I'm right about it? Who in here rewards your kids for being bad? Don't reward them for being bad. You only reward them for being good. You're trying to develop a character. You're trying to develop a commitment. Anybody, and you're trying to develop faithfulness. And that's what God does to us. If we can be faithful in the midst of hard times, God said he will bless you with good things. And the and God that blesses you with good things is consistent. He, he's the father of the heavenly lights. Come on, somebody. And he does not change like the shifting shadows. And every, every, good, every gift that is good has come from our father and it was sent from above. Basically what that means is that God can, you don't have to worry about what's going on on earth because God can pay you from heaven. The earth's banks can shut down, but the heavenly bank stays open. The question is, where do you look for your paycheck from? Oh, come on, come on. Ain't that what it said? You can open up the heavenly bank, open up a window, and pour you out a blessing you don't have room enough to receive. Even in the midst of chaos, even in the midst of turmoil, God can still bless you from heaven. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. All right, verse 18, verse 18, we out. 
watch this, he, he chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits to all that he created. We talked about negative changes, negative character, no change, God doesn't change. And then we talked about, we, the last thing we wanna talk about is nature change. Like, God wants to change your nature. God wants to change not how you pretend to act on the outside, but how you really feel and think on the inside. God wants to change you from the inside out. So when you get saved, God changes you because God puts the Holy Spirit in you. And when the Holy Spirit moves into you, he, he vacates evil spirits like they got to go. Like he, he puts the evil spirit. That's why them evil desires no longer in your heart because now the Holy Spirit lives in your heart. You desire to do good things. So if you desire to do good things, when the devil tempts you with evil things, you don't respond because you prefer good things over evil things. Any, any, come on, anybody say, anybody know I'm right about it? Somebody say hallelujah. And I'm so glad that, come on somebody, God sent his son Jesus to come to the earth to die, to pay the price for our uh, sinful for our, our simple challenges and then he was raised from the dead to develop us into spiritual champions and I'm so glad that he did it. Anybody glad that, I did it, that he did it? And when we put faith in the word of truth, when we put faith in the gospel, that's the truth about Jesus, then we enter into a relationship with God. And when we enter into a relationship with God, he changes us from the inside out. He changes us on the inside. We are changed by the transforming of our, of our we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. God changes the way that we feel about it, the way that we see it, the, the way we see the word, the way we see him, the the way we see the world, the way we can respond to the world, God changes us. Somebody give God a hand clap of praise. Anybody glad to be changed? Come on, somebody. The Bible says that any man or woman that be in Christ is a new creation. All things, old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Is that, is that the old preachers to say, I looked at my feet and they look new. I looked at my hands and they did too. Anybody know that God can change everything? But at first he'll change you on the inside, and then he'll start to lose, use you to bring changes on the outside. And he said, he is the father of the heavenly lights. And so he caused you to be the little light. So even in these dark situations, he wants you to shine. He wants you to show godly character. Don't sell out God in difficult times. Don't sell out God for politics. You just keep on being a Christian. You just keep on shining. You just keep on working. You just keep on praising. You just keep on proclaiming the word, even during difficult times. And the God that gives good gifts will give good gifts to you in response to your goodness, in response to evil. When evil comes your way, you respond with goodness and the God of the lights will bless you with good things. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. On Christ the solid rock I stand. Oh, other ground. It's sick and sand. Let's pray. Merciful Father, Lord, we love you and we praise you. Things change, but we're so glad that you stay the same. You have been good, you are good, and you will be good. And Lord, you bless us for being good. Help us to do good even in response to evil. We have no control over what happens to us or around us. We can't control what people do to us. We can't control the temptations that the devil brings to us. But what we can control is the response that we have. Help us to represent you in fair weather or in challenging seasons. We were faithful to you in 2019. But glad, God, thank you so much for helping us to be faithful to you in 2020. 2020 has been a year. But Lord, you have kept us and you have used us and you allowed us to be faithful to you. And Lord, we commit that we're going to be faithful to you even in 2021. We have no idea what the future holds, but we know the one who holds the future. And we're going to keep on trusting you, Lord. We, we already sold out to you. So everyone, under the sound of my voice, with your eyes closed and your heads bowed, if there's somebody in the house and you are not sure that you are saved, the Bible says that today is the day of salvation. <clears throat> and so if you're not sure that you're saved and you want to get it right with the Lord, this is your opportunity. All we ask is that you put your hand in the air. We're not gonna ask you any questions. <clears throat> We're just going, somebody's gonna take you in the back and introduce you to Jesus. And if that's you and you wanna be saved, just put your hand in the air. Pastor, I'm really not sure I'm saved, but I'm gonna get it right. All right, y'all, let's give God a hand clap of praise. All right, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Um, what we also want to do is open up the doors of the church. Uh, if you already saved and you know that you're going to heaven, but you don't have a church home that's conducive for your growth, and you want to be a part of the key, we need you and you need us. 
we invite you to become a part of our church. We open up doors of church. Doors of the church open. Anybody want to join? Doors of the church open. Anybody want to join? All right. God bless you. Come on, y'all. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. If there's somebody and you are watching us online and you've never surrendered your life to the Lord, the Bible says that today is the day of salvation. This may be the last opportunity you have. The Bible says in Romans 10 and 9 that if you will believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and if you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. And so if that's you and you want to get it right with the Lord, he says, all you have to do is just be sincere and talk to him. But you can't repeat after me. So just close your eyes online, all around the world. Bow your head, talk to the Lord. Say, dear father, thank you for loving me so much that you sent your son Jesus to die for my sins. I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. And I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. Forgive me of my sins right now. And I promise to do my best to obey you. Thank you, Lord, for saving me right now. Well, God bless you. Come on, y'all, let's give God a hand clap of praise. If you made that commitment to the Lord right now, you're saved, and we want to welcome you to the family of God. Uh, we ask that you will go online and that you would look for I Am New. Go on our website, and then you can click Get Connected, and then you can send us a memo just saying, I gave my life to the Lord, or I want to join the Key Church and somebody will call you back and get you connected. God bless you. We appreciate you so much. Yes, all right. Now, <clears throat> I'm remiss. I forgot to uh, talk about the visitors. We had our announcements for the veterans and all that. Do we have any visitors in the house, first-time visitors? Any first-time visitors in the house? Raise your hand, first-time visitors. Any? All right, we're all family. Come on, y'all, let's give God a hand clap for you. God is good. All right. If you are online and you want to give to the Key Church, you were blessed by what God is doing. Uh, there's a few ways you can do that. One, you can download an app called Givelify, and then look for the Key Church. You'll see my picture, and then we ask that you will put your credit and debit card information into that secure account. And then once that's set, you never have to set it again, and giving becomes very, very convenient and easy. Uh, you can give in about three clicks on your phone in about three minutes any time of the day or any day of the week. If you don't feel comfortable with giving online, you can mail your offering in to The Key Church, P.O. Box 50793, Fort Worth, Texas, 76105. God bless you, and thank you, everybody, for your generosity. If you are in the house and you want to give by envelope, uh, there are envelopes at the boxes. They're at each exit on your way out. You can just fill one of those out and put it in. And we thank you in advance for your generosity. Come on, y'all. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. What an awesome God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And throughout this week, pray for our country because we've had a major change. And we just want to pray for peace. Uh, we want to pray for unity. It's just like we got two parties, but we're still one team. And if we don't learn how to get together as a team, we will never win. And so we just have to have unity. And in and, and, and any competition, you have to realize somebody is going to lose. And when it's your turn to lose, and your turn is coming, when it's your turn to lose, uh, we have to learn not to be sore losers. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, we just need to accept it and celebrate the person that won. Somebody celebrated you when you won. Can I get an amen? So we need to, we need to celebrate others when they win. That's just, that's just simple stuff. Amen. All right, all right, come on, Elder, and give us our benediction. Let us all stand. Let us all stand. Let's pray. Say amen.